so this is the first lecture on assam history so first of all let us have a brief introduction to assam history so this is the timeline of assam history now assam history can be divided into three broad period first comes the ancient history then comes the medieval history and finally the modern history right so in the ancient history of assam i will cover the history of a prehistoric period and mythological period up to 12th century right and mythological period or prehistoric period means basically these are based on mythology right uh, then up to i'll cover 12th century then i will discuss the medieval history of assam right so in assam is it is called madhya jug right medieval period madhya jug so in this particular period i will discuss the muslim invasions to assam up to the treaty of yandabu that was signed in the year 1826 right so yandabu treaty basically it marks the fall of medieval period in assam right or the ending of medieval period then comes the modern history so modern history basically it includes the period of british rule in assam as well as the freedom struggle right so these are the three sections ancient history medieval history and modern history this th three section i will cover in this particular course so now first of all let us discuss what is there in ancient history so as i have already mentioned ancient history of assam begins with the mythological period or the traditional rulers so this particular period of history is based on basically mythology right so no real evidence uh, like uh, stone in inscription or written literature are found regarding this particular period right so it is entirely based on mythology right and uh, then comes the real political history of assam and regarding real political history we mean that uh, some considerable you know evidences are found regarding this particular dynasty say for example stone inscription then coinage right then copper plate inscription and other considerable evidences so that is why they are called real political history so the real political history of assam begins with burman dynasty right followed by halstomba dynasty then followed by pal dynasty and others right so first comes the mythological period then comes the real political history starting with burman dynasty then halstomba dynasty followed by pal dynasty and the later kings of the ancient period of assam so this is the ancient history of assam in brief so no need to worry i will cover all the sections in detail in the upcoming lectures then comes the medieval history of assam so in medieval history of assam i will cover the period of muslim invasion of 13th century up to the treaty of yandabu right or the yandabu treaty so here i will cover the muslim invasion first that took place in 13th century then i will discuss the komota kingdom right then i will discuss the khen dynasty then sutia dynasty or sutia kingdom it was a very powerful kingdom in the eastern part of assam then comes the kosari dynasty or kosari kingdom so kosari kingdom it is a very powerful kingdom in the medieval period of assam then comes the bhuya so bhuya is basically not a dynasty basically there are some rulers which are distributed particularly in the lower assam right so the rulers are distributed into different locations of assam so they are not actually king they were landlords right so bhuyas then comes jayantia kingdom so earlier i think you all know that meghalaya was a part of that means the khasi hills jayantia hills all those were part of assam right in medieval period and even in the modern period right up to independence so this actually jayantia hills now falls in the meghalaya state so anyway in the medieval history of assam we will also discuss the jayantia kingdom then we will discuss the kos kingdom so it is a very powerful kingdom in medieval period of assam and finally and the most importantly the ahom kingdom 
and if you see from examination point of view then most of the question around 80 to 85 percent questions on Assam history are based on Ahom Kingdom alone so in this particular lecture I will provide every detail every detail information regarding our home kingdom as well as this powerful kingdom like coast kingdom kasari kingdom etc right then comes the modern history of assam so this is the period of starting of british rule from 1826 up to the freedom struggle or independence of assam right up to 1947 so first of all we will discuss that after yandabu treaty how british actually annex the territory of Assam right then we'll discuss the starting of British rule British administration and other measures taken by uh, the British right so then after we will discuss the freedom struggle right freedom struggle of the Assamese people and also we'll discuss some other aspects of modern history of Assam so here actually I'll cover miscellaneous important incidents of modern period of Assam right so these are the three section ancient history medieval history and modern history so now let us start with the ancient history of Assam so let us begin with the mythological period and the calm rope so I think most of you are aware that the ancient Assam was actually initially known as Pragzutikpur so very important the ancient name of Assam was Pragzutipur and then it later came to known as Kamrup right now first let us discuss the mythological period and Kamrup so most of you are aware that the ancient name of Assam was Pragzutipur and then later it came to known as Kamrup so very very important from examination point of view that the ancient name of Assam was Pragzutipur and Kamrup right so now let us discuss the origin of this particular names so according to Ramayan Ramayan is the epic right so this particular Pragzutipur city it was founded by Amurta Raja so Amurta Raja was the son of Kuha Muni and grandfather of Viswamitra Muni or sage basically right then according to Kalika Puran so basically it is a 10th century text so in the literature chapter I have already told you that Kalika Puran it is a very important source of history right so according to Kalika Puran Lord Brahma created the stars first in this location and hence the city is known as Pragzutikpur and it is also believed that Pragzutik the name Pragzutik is derived from the term Prag and Jutis so Prag means basically east right and Jutik means light so Pragzutik comes from the term Eastern light because it was believed that in the ancient period it is a you know center of astronomy right so Pragzutik means Eastern light then let us discuss the origin of the name Kamrup so when Hoti died so Hoti was the wife of Lord Shiva so when she died Lord Shiva actually wandered carrying her dead body in his soldier basically Lord Shiva was in grief right and that is why Kamdev Kamdev is the god, god of love right so Kamdev made him fall in love in again but Lord Shiva got angry and he burned Kamdev into ashes and after that Kamdev recovered his original form in this land and hence this particular place is known as Kamrup right so in this particular place Kamdev has you know recovered his original form and hence the name Kamrup very very important please remember then as per Yogini Tantra or Jogini Tantra Kamrup had four parts right or four divisions very important from examination point of view please remember the westernmost part was Kampit it extends from Korotwa river up to Khunkuk river right then the Ratnapids. This particular Korotwa River, it is now in West Bengal, right? Then the next is Ratnapid. So Ratnapid, it extended from Hunkuk to Rupohi River. Then Hubornapid. 
Huborno pit actually extended from Rupohi River to Voroli River. So Voroli River at present it is in the Sonitpur district and finally the easternmost part is the Homar pit and Homar pit actually ex extended from Voroli River up to Dikrong River. Dikrong River it is in the Lakhimpur district. So here you can see uh, in ancient time as per Yogini Tantra, Kamrup was extended from Korotua River up to Dikrong River, which is in present day Lakhimpur. And please remember the division Kam Pit, Ratna Pit, Huborna Pit, and Homar Pit, right? And this particular division is also mentioned in the Haragori Hambad, right? Then I have discussed uh, the Haragori Hambad in the literature section. So the first historic reference to Kamrup is made in the Allahabad Pillar inscription. Right, and this particular inscription belonged to Hamudra Gupta. So, Hamudra Gupta was a very powerful ruler of North India in 4th century. Right, now let us discuss the rulers of Kamrup in the mythological period. So, these are basically traditional rulers. So, the earliest mentioned ruler of Kamrup is Mohiranga Danab. Very, very important, and this question is often asked in competitive examination. So, please remember Mohiranga Danab is the first or earliest ruler of Kamrup, right? And the Moirang Hill that is located in present day Gwandi city, it is named after Mohiranga Danab, right? Then, Mohiranga is succeeded by Hotaka Hur, Hambar Hur, and Ratna Hur, right? And they were followed by Ghatak. So, these are descendants of. Mohiranga Danab. Very, very important. Please try to remember the name of all the kings, right? And here you can see the, you know, suffix or epithets like Danab or Ahur. It means they were non-Aryan uh, people, right? The kings were of non-Aryan origin. Uh, then Ghatak. Ghatak was slain by Norakahur. And Norakahur is the most powerful and most famous ruler of ancient Kamrup. Right, and he made Pragjyotipur the capital city. And Narakahur has founded a new dynasty called Bhomo dynasty or Borah dynasty. This question is also very common in competitive examination. Narakahur founded which dynasty? Then the answer will be Bhomo or Baraha. And the question can be also asked otherwise. Say, for example, who founded Bhomo or Bara dynasty? Then the answer will be Narakahur. Right. So there are many legends actually associated with Narakahur. So as per one legend, Narakahur was born of Prithvi by Vishnu in his Balah avatar, right? Balah avatar or Balah incarnation. And Narakahur was brought up by Janak, Janak Raja, and he was the king of North Bihar or Bideh, right? Then Narakahur had built the Kamaikha temple and the stairs up to the temple, which is located in the Nilasal hill. And as per belief, actually, Naraka Hur was very religious and prosperous in his early days. But later, he came under the influence of Banahur. And Banahur, actually, he was also a traditional king in Sonitpur, right? So, after, uh, actually, when Naraka Hur came under the influence of Banahur, he became irreligious, right? And he actually began his atrocities. And there is also a legend goes that Naraka Hur even proposed goddess Kamaikha to marry him then uh, after that proposal goddess Kamaikha accepted it but on one condition the condition was that Naraka Hur would construct a temple a tank and a road from the foothills to the top of the Nilasal hill in one night right and accordingly actually all the tasks were nearly completed by Naraka Hur but goddess Kamaikha played a trick so she made a cock to crow before the usual hour uh, to indicate dawn or morning and such in, in that way Naragahur's effort went in vain right so this is a very important lesson associated with the construction of Kamaikha temple very important right and it is also believed that when the news of the atrocities of uh, Naragahur reached Lord Sri Krishna then he came to Prakjuti uh, pool with his army then he defeated Naragahur and killed Narag in a battle and placed Naraka son Bhagadatta in the throne of Pragjyotipur. And there is another legend associated with Lord Krishna. So when actually Lord Krishna came to Pragjyotipur, his actually horse got tired. 
in a particular place and in that place actually a temple was built known as Ashokranta temple right so actually history and culture are as associated right so the Ashokranta temple is associated with this particular historical event very important right so now I have already mentioned that Sri Krishna has placed Bhagadatta in the throne of Kamrup and the name of Bhagadatta is also mentioned in the epic Mahabharata and his name was Hoila Loy. Hoila Loy means actually he actually dwelled among the mountains or the hills and uh, actually his troops consisting of Kirat. Kirat means basically the Kosari tribe in Assam right then the Chinese and the dwellers of the sea coast right sea coast means basically it is now included in the Bangladesh right now Bhagaratta had fought along with the Kauravs against the Pandav in the famous Battle of Kurukhetra. Arthat Bhagaratta Kurukhetra Juddhat Kauravar Lagat Pandavar Lagat Juddha Korisil Aru Kauravar Folia Asil right but Bhagaratta was killed in that particular Battle of Kurukhetra and the daughter of Bhagaratta was Bhanumati and Bhanumati was married to Durjudhan. Durjudhan is one of the prominent Kaurav right. Then Bhagadatta was succeeded by Bajradatta and Bajrapani. And the Narakakur descendants like Bhagadatta, Bajrapani, uh, Bajradatta, they rule for 19 generation. And the last king of this particular generation is Huparna. Hubohu and Huparna were the last kings of the generation founded by Narakakur. Very, very important information, right? Now let us discuss some other traditional rulers of the mythological period. So the Kalika Puran and the other Puran, they actually contains the account of King Ban or Banakhur and actually he ruled the Sunitpur or Tezpur, right? And Ban Raja or Banakhur is contemporary to Narakahur. And even now in some places of Tezpur, you will find several monuments associated with law, uh, the king Banakhur. And even there is a stage, a famous stage in Tezpur called Ban stage. And this particular Ban stage is named after this Banakhur, right? Then legend goes that Banakhur was defeated by Lord Sri Krishna in the famous Harihar Juddha, right? So actually when did this particular Juddha or battle happen? So the grandson of Sri Krishna was Aniruddha and Aniruddha actually secretly married Usha. Usha was the daughter of Banraja, right? Then when actually he got the news, he captured Aniruddha. Then Sri Krishna came here to recover his grandson Aniruddha. Then finally he defeated Ban, right? And in that particular uh, battle, Banraja or Banakhur was assisted by Lord Shiva. And hence this particular battle is known as Hari Har Juddha. Hari means Lord Sri Krishna and Har means Lord Shiva, right? So basically it was a battle between Lord Shiva and Lord Sri Krishna, right? Very important and very interesting. Then the Bhagavat and the Vishnu Puran, the, actually these are ancient texts, right? So they also narrate the story of another ruler called Bhishma. So Bhishma basically ruled in the Hodia region. That means in the eastern part of Assam and his capital was Kundil Nagar. And Bhishma had a beautiful daughter named Rukmini and Rukmini uh, was married by Lord Sri Krishna, right? So Rukmini was basically the wife of Lord Krishna. So these are basically mythology, right? Mythological history. Uh, then another Khudra king named Debeswar also ruled Kamrup. Then Nagakha was another ruler and he ruled Pratapgarh in Vishwanath, uh, right? And Pratapgarh is basically a fort or rampart. Then Dharmapal founded another kingdom in Kamrup and he was succeeded by Padma Narayan, Sandra Narayan and Ram Sandra. And Ram Sandra was a very famous king and he has established his capital at Majuli, right? So Majuli has found mention in the ancient text as well. Then the son of Ram Sandra was Arimatta and Bodhagar was his capital and there are many legends associated with Arimatta. Then Jungal Bolohu was another famous king and basically Jungal Bolohu was the son of Arimatta, right? And regarding Arimatta, there is a legend that his head, his head is similar to the head of a fish, right? So uh, the Ari fish and hence his name is Arimatta. So basically these are legends or beliefs. Then Jungal Bolohu was a famous ruler and a god or rampart called Jungal Bolohu god, it is 
still exists in the Roha region of Nogao. Right. So these are traditional rulers of the mythological period. Now let us discuss the real political history of Assam, which begins with the Bormon dynasty. Very important. And Bormon dynasty, it actually its period was from 355 to 650 AD. That means 4th century up to 7th century, right? So the inscription of Bhaskar Burman, Bhaskar Burman was the most popular ruler of Burman dynasty. So the copper plate and rock inscription of Bhaskar Burman, then Bedaganga epigraph of Bhuti Burman, then Banabhattas Harkha Sorit and the accounts of the Chinese pilgrim Hu Wen Sang. Actually all this furnishes some considerable material regarding the history of Burman dynasty, right? So regarding Burman dynasty, you will find so many real evidences, right? So the first ruler of Burman dynasty is Puisha Burman. Very important. This is the spelling, right? Puisha. Puisha Burman. And he ruled from 355 to 380 AD. Then Puisha Burman assumed the title Maharaja Dhiraja. And this, this particular title actually indicates his independent status. And Puisha Burman was the uh, king which is contemporary to Hamudra Gupta. And Hamudra Gupta was a very famous North Indian ruler, right, of Gupta dynasty. Then Pushya Burman was succeeded by Hamudra Burman, Bala Burman, Kailan Burman, Ganapati Burman and Mahendra Burman. So during the reign of Kailan Burman, the Dabaka region, the present day Dabaka region or the valley of Kapili river, it actually consists of Nogaon district, present day Nogaon district, Karbianglong and North Kachar hill region. So this Dabaka region was included in the empire of Kamrup. Right. So earlier, actually, uh, these regions were, were not included. Right. So it was Koilan Burman who included Dabaka region into Kamrup. Then he also sent diplomatic missions to China in 428 AD. Very, very important. Right. Then Mohendra Burman expanded his empire to Southeast Bengal up to the sea. And he is the first king to perform the Assamedha Yagga. Very important, Mahendra Burman has performed the Asamedha Yagya even twice. So, in actually Asamedha Yagya, it is associated with a horse. So, basically, a horse is released after a yagna, right? So, Asamedha Yagya basically it has found mention in the epic Mahabharat, right? Judistir has also performed Asamedha Yagya. Then the grandson of Mahendra Burman was Bhuti Burman and he has conquered the Pundra Bardhana or the present day North Bengal. So please try to remember the sequence, right? Kailan Burman, then Mahendra Burman and Mahendra Burman performed Asamedha Yagya. Very important from examination point of view. Then Bhuti Burman was succeeded by Sushita Burman and he actually suffered a defeat at the hands of Mahahena Gupta and finally he lost the position of Purna Bardhana or North Bengal. Then Sushita Burman was succeeded by his son Bhaskar Burman and Bhaskar Burman was the most powerful ruler and actually he is the most famous ruler of Burman dynasty and he ruled from 600 to 650 AD. A lot many questions are asked from the actually period of Bhaskar Burman, right? And Bhaskar Burman actually made alliance with the famous king Harkha Bardhan and he also recovered Pundra Bardhana and he also brought Goro. Uh, with his capital at Karna Suvarna under his control, right? So he also brought Silhet and Tripura, including the Southeast Bengal, under his control. So basically, he defeated the king of Gaura, king of Silhet, and also king of Tripura. So he was a very powerful king, ruled from 600 to 650 AD. Please remember the years, very, very important from examination point of view, right? Then, actually, after the death of Harkha Bardhan. Harkha Bardhan was a very famous ruler of North India. So after the death of Harkha Bardhan, Bhaskar Burman became the most powerful ruler in the eastern part of India up to Nalanda, right? And during the reign of Bhaskar Burman, the great Chinese pilgrim Hu Wen Sang visited Kamrup. This is the most important question that is more often asked from the ancient history of Assam. Hu Wen Sang visited Kamrup in 643 AD during the reign of Kumar Bhaskar Burman. And a lot of authentic description about Kamrup can be obtained from the accounts of Hu Wen Sang, right? And Hu Wen Sang also speak about the uh, noble qualities of Bhaskar Burman, right? 
and because of the in-depth knowledge Bhaskar Brahman was also called the second Brihaspati and Bhaskar Brahman made Kamrup a noted center of learning and actually this particular uh, center attracted students from outside also uh, now Bhaskar Brahman actually he remained unmarried right and therefore he was known as Kumar Bhaskar Brahman so since he was unmarried he doesn't have any son and with his death in 1650 AD Burman dynasty came to an end very very important information regarding Burman dynasty so I am uh, you know providing all the important points so please try to remember all of them now let us discuss the Hal Sambha dynasty so Bhaskar Brahman uh, died childless right so after his death a non Aryan chief named Hal Stambha, he occupied the throne of Kamrup and this particular incident is mentioned in the Boragao grant of Ratnapal Ratnapal is basically a Pal uh, no, king of Pal dynasty. I will discuss uh, in the next slide. So, Horagori Hombad also mentioned about the Halstamba dynasty, right? So, Horagori Hombad, then Kalika Puran, Yogini, Tantra, these actually ancient texts provide some valuable you know, information regarding the ancient history of Assam. So, anyway, the, the reign of Halstamba was from 655 to 675 AD. So, Burman dynasty is followed by Halstamba dynasty and the names of only 15 descendants of Halstamba have been found so far. So, during the rule of this particular Halstamba dynasty, the capital city is Haruppesar. Haruppesar is nothing but the present day Tespur city, right? And that is why so many, you know, monuments and ancient architecture are, are found in the Tespur city, right? So, that is why Tespur is historically important. Then the sixth king of this particular Salstomba dynasty was Sri Harkha or Harkhadev. He ruled from 725 to 50 AD and he was the most famous ruler. And he conquered Gora, Odra, Kolinga, Kuhala, etc. Then after conquering Kolinga and Kuhala, Harkhadev led an expedition to the south but he was defeated and finally he was overthrown and killed by Yoshabarman of Kanauj. Right? Then during the rule of Harsadev, actually Kamrup reached the zenith of military glory. So at that time, actually Kamrup became a very powerful country in terms of military power. And then according to the Hayunthal epigraph, Harsadev was succeeded by his son Balabarman. Then Palamba, the great grandson of Harsadev, was contemporary of Gopal, and Gopal was the first king of the Pal dynasty of Gaura. Then Palamba's son Hazara Burman was another famous ruler of Halstamba dynasty, right? And Hazara Burman was the first ruler of Halstamba dynasty to perform his coronation ceremony according to Vedic rite, right? And he assumed the high sounding uh, title called Maharaja Dhiraja. It was also actually assumed by the first, uh, you know, Burman ruler Pusha Brahman right then after him Hazara Brahman also took this title Maharaja Dhiraja Parameswara Parambhatakara so this is a very you know uh, it is very difficult to pronounce please try to remember uh, then Hazara Brahman actually made two inscription the Hayunthal copper plate which I actually find at Nogao and the Tezpur rock epigraph and he also built a lofty Shiva temple and rows of stately buildings in the capital city of Haruppesar, that means in Tezpur. And he also actually constructed or he actually caused to dug a big tank called Hazara Pukhuri. And Hazara Pukhuri is still existence in the Tezpur, right? So Hazara Pukhuri is named after basically Hazara Borman. Very important. Please try to remember. And he, Hazara Borman, belonged to the Halstamba dynasty. So this type of question can be also asked, right? So Hazara Borman. Uh, you might get confused with this particular uh, suffix called Burman, right? But he doesn't belong to uh, Burman dynasty, he belonged to Halstamba dynasty, right? And Tiakinga is the last king of Halstamba dynasty. Uh, he died in the year 9, 970 AD. Now let us discuss about the Pal dynasty. So Tiakinga possibly died childless, similar to Bhaskar Burman. So thereafter his death, uh, the officers or the ministers actually chosen Brahma Pal to the throne and Brahma Pal was also known as Jitari and the rule or the reign of Brahma, uh, Brahma Pal can be placed between 990 to 1010 AD so these years are also very important 
and this particular title pal it is an abbreviation of the sanskrit term palak and palak means the protector right or the ruler or the administrator and he was succeeded by his son ratnapal and ratnapal was a very powerful king and he shifted the capital city of his kingdom of pragjyotipur to dudjaya or sri dudjaya very very important please remember ratnapal of pal dynasty has established the dudjaya or sri dudjaya right now ratnapal appears to have encouraged trade and commerce as well as uh, you know learning and education and ratnapal's son died at an early age and he is actually uh, he ratnapal was succeeded by his grandson indrapal right and indrapal ruled from 1040 to uh, 1065 ad and he was defeated by kollan chandra he was a ruler of bengal then gopal dharmapal are some other important rulers of this pal dynasty and three inscriptions belonging to dharmapal's reign are found and he was a great patron of religion learning and he himself was a poet and the first eight verses verses means pod right so the first eight pods or verses of pushpa bhadra grant was composed by dharmapal himself very very important usually actually the you know grant were composed by or written by the poets but here the pushpa bhadra grant work were composed by dharmapal then towards the end of his reign dharmapal was conducting his administration from the capital at kamrup nagar so basically it is an extension of the old city of kamrup towards north guwahati right and dharmapal was succeeded by joypal and joypal was the last ruler of pal dynasty very very important information right and during joypal's reign kamrup was attacked by mayana and mayana was the general of bengal pal king rampal and basically after this defeat joypal lost his position in north bengal so after defeating joypal the bengal king he placed tishadev or tingadev as his feudal king in kamrup and pal dynasty came to an end uh, but the feudal king tingadev he started rebellion and after that pal king kumar pal sent vaidyadev then vaidyadev conquered kamrup and he declared his independence in 1138 ad then he assumed the title maharaja dhiraja maharaja dhiraja parameswara param bharakata very very you know complicated title right then later vaidyadev was killed in the hands of rayari dev and rayari dev actually established himself as an independent king of kamrup so after pal dynasty actually there were different rulers who started ruling kamrup right first tishadev then vaidyadev then finally rayari dev has established a independent kingdom in kamrup then rayari dev was succeeded by udayakarna and ballav dev and ballav dev was defeated by lakshman sena from bengal then the successor of ballav dev was biswasundara deva and biswasundara deva basically recovered his kingdom and he again is established his independent status and biswasundara deva was popularly known as prithu or barthu very very important information prithu he has another name biswasundara deva and he was the most powerful king in the later part of kamrup right and there are many considerable archaeological evidence particularly rock epigraph copper plate inscription and land grants etc regarding the ancient period up to 12th century right so actually during the reign of uh, prithu the muslim invaded assam for the first time and from that period we can consider it as medieval period of assam so here the ancient history of assam ends thank you for watching